Hey there, in this video, we're going to be using Python to make this quick and simple rock, paper, scissors game. For those of you who are new to programming, this will be a great project to start with as we'll be touching upon a lot of the fundamentals. To follow along with me, you can head over to replit.com and sign up for a free account. There will be a link in the description below. Once you've made your account, go ahead and create a REPL and make sure that Python is chosen as your language. Once you've done all that, you should be greeted with the screen that looks something like this and we can go ahead and get started. We'll begin our code by initializing some variables that we're going to need in the near future. Firstly, I'm going to create a list that I'm going to call choices, and it's just going to contain the possible options that the player can choose from, those being rock, paper, and scissors. Next, I'm going to create two Boolean variables, also known as true or false variables, which are going to be playing and invalid. I'm going to set the default value of playing equal to true, and the default value of invalid equal to false. With those set up, we can go ahead and start creating a central loop for our game. We're going to create a while loop and we're going to set the condition to be while playing. Inside the loop, we're first just going to print a message that asks the user to pick either rock, paper, or scissors. After that, we're also going to print another message that just tells them that if they want to quit the game, they can enter Q. Since we've asked the player to make a decision, let's go ahead and store the results of that decision into a variable. We're going to call the input function, so input with parentheses, and it's going to go ahead and ask the player to type something in, and from there we can take whatever they typed in and store it in the player choice variable. This would be a good place to stop and test our code before we get too ahead of ourselves. Let's just add one more condition so that our loop can actually terminate. We're going to say that if the player enters Q, then we're going to set the playing variable equal to false, and our loop will no longer continue. Let's go ahead and run our code by clicking this big green button at the top, and we'll observe what happens. As we can see, the correct message seems to be printing out. And if I enter anything, for example, rock, it'll just go ahead and loop until we give it an input such as Q. And we'll see that our program terminates. All right, so we're able to get a choice from the player. But remember that rock, paper, scissors is a two player game. So we're going to need their computer opponent to make a decision as well. To accomplish this, we're going to want to have the computer just make a random choice between any of the three options that we have in our list. This can be done using the random module, which comes bundled with Python. So on our very first line, I'm just going to go ahead and write import random. Now let's go ahead and scroll down to below our player choice variable. And I'm going to create another variable, which I'm going to call opponent choice, or just op choice for short. To randomly select either rock, paper, or scissors, we can go ahead and use the choice function from the random module. We'll call random.choice, and then we'll pass in our choices list, which contains rock, paper, and scissors as our three elements. It'll then go ahead and return one of the three at random. So we've got our two choices, and now we can determine the winner of the game, right? Well, not quite. First, let's consider that right now, there's nothing stopping the player from entering whatever they want. If the computer chooses paper, and our player chooses fist, well, our game's broken. To address this, we're going to want to check to see if the player either entered rock, paper, or scissors, and if they didn't, we're going to ask them to enter something again. One easy way to do this is to see if what the player entered is one of the elements in our choices list. If it is, then we know that a valid choice was made, and we're good to go. Our game can be played, so we can go ahead and start by printing what the player chose. In this case, we'll put a print statement, the string you chose with the space, and then the player's choice. And using the plus sign, we can essentially glue the two strings together. Under the exact same logic, we can also go ahead and print our computer opponent's choice as well. So we're going to say the opponent chose, and then we're going to go ahead and glue their selection. Keep in mind that these two if statements are never going to run at the same time. We're never going to have player's choice be one of rock, paper, scissors, while also being Q. So if we see that the first if branch ran, there really is no reason to go and check this one as well. We'd just be wasting time and energy. So we can improve our code a little bit by changing this if statement to an else if. And what this will do is make sure that if this runs true, we're not going to go ahead and check this. So we've got two cases covered. The first one being if the player made a valid option. The second one being if the player no longer wants to play. Now we need to handle our third case where the player enters some invalid input. In this case, we're going to use an else statement to go ahead and handle every other possible thing that the player could enter. So if it's not one of the valid options, we're just going to go ahead and set the invalid variable equal to true. We can then use this invalid variable to give the player some feedback. Let's march up to the top of our while loop. So after a while playing, 
we're going to put another if statement that's going to say if not invalid. We're then going to want to move our print statement inside this if branch. So if the move is not invalid, then we're going to print choose rock, paper, or scissors. Since we had initialized our invalid variable to false, this will always be true every time the game starts. So our loop will begin by asking the player to print rock, paper, or scissors. They'll go ahead and make their choice, and then we're going to check to see if the choice is valid or not. If it's not, then we're going to run this else statement here, invalid is going to be set to true, and now we're going to loop back to the top of the loop. The player's input will no longer be valid, so we can add an else statement to handle that case. In which case, we're going to want to tell the player that there was an invalid input, and we want them to type either rock, paper, or scissors. We'll then reset the value of invalid back equal to false so we can give the player another chance to give a valid choice. This process will repeat until the player chooses a valid option. So with some error checking implemented, now would be a good time to test our code and see if it's doing what we think it should. Let's go ahead and run our code, and we're going to start by entering a valid input. If I enter rock, then we're going to see that this line right here is running. Now if I enter something invalid, such as some random jargon, and I press enter, we're going to see that it tells us we have invalid input and we need to type something valid. And lastly, typing in Q will terminate our program. So now everything's good, right? Well, there's a few more things we might want to consider. For example, let's go ahead and rerun the program, and I'm going to enter rock in capital. We're going to get an invalid input. Technically, the player gave a valid option, yet we're still getting this error. So why is this happening? Well, despite the common stereotype, computers actually aren't that smart. We as humans can use a little bit of common sense to distinguish that if the player enters rock, then it's pretty much the same as rock no matter the capitalization. But a computer is going to look at these two and think that they're completely different. To make our game a little bit more bulletproof, we're going to want to help the computer out here. And one way we can do this is to modify the player input a little bit. Python strings come with built-in functions, and some of them will be really useful to us. For example, we can use the lower function to make sure that the player's input will be modified so that all the characters are lower cased. Because input returns a string, we can go ahead and call .lower in parentheses right on top of it. One more thing to consider would be what happens if the player's input includes some white space. Remember that even though we as humans could probably make the distinction, Python will not. So let's just go ahead and remove any white space from the player's input and to do this, we can use the built-in strip function, and we'll go ahead and layer that one right on top of our lower function. Now if I run the program, and I enter rock with spaces and capital, we can see that it's still able to detect the correct input. There may be other things we need to consider, but for now, our game is pretty bulletproof. We've come a long way from the beginning of the video, and to test your understanding of everything we've done so far, I recommend you take some time to pause the video and write some code comments. I'll go ahead and comment my code as well, so on the screen you'll see it appear in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so now we need a way to determine who won the game. To keep our code nice and organized, I'm going to go ahead and store all this logic into a function. So at the very top, I'm going to define a new function, which I'll call determine winner, and I'm going to pass in two arguments, being the player choice and the opponent choice, which I'll just shorten to player and op. Our rock, paper, scissors game can have three outcomes. There can be a tie, the player can win, or the computer opponent can win. We can start with the simplest outcome first. We're going to check to see if it's a tie. If the player choice matches the opponent choice, then we know they pick the same thing, and we can return that it's a tie game. Next, let's consider what would have to happen if the player were to win. So we're going to create an else if branch, and we're first going to check to see if the player is equal to rock and the opponent is equal to scissors. However, this isn't the only win condition. We can also check to see if the player is equal to paper and the opponent is equal to rock, or if the player is equal to scissors and the opponent is equal to paper. Under any of these three conditions, we know that the player won, so we can go ahead and return a message letting them know. Now there's only one more branch that needs to be considered. If we know that the player didn't tie, and we know that the player didn't win, there's only one other outcome that could have happened. In this case, we can write an else statement that says the player lost, and we'll return a message letting them know. With some logic to determine who won the game, let's go ahead and put it into our game loop. We can scroll down to the part of the loop where the player has made a valid entry. All we have to do is use our determine winner function, pass in the player's choice and the opponent's choice, and then go ahead and print the results of that outcome. Now would be a good time to stop and test our code, so 
let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. If I enter rock and play the game, we're going to see that the opponent chose scissors and we won this game. Now I'm going to try paper. And we can see that the opponent chose paper and it was a tie game. Lastly, I'm going to try scissors. We can see that the opponent chose rock and we lost the game. So everything seems to be working as intended. If you're not convinced, feel free to do some more testing on the determine winner function. You can go ahead and print out the outcome for different combinations of choices. All right, so as it stands, we pretty much have a fully functional game, but we can add a couple of quality of life touches to make the game a lot more fun. We can give the game a bit more of a visual player by drawing a hand motion in ASCII art of rock, paper, and scissors. Credit to Wynand1004, whose ASCII art I'll be using in this video. I'll leave a link in the description so you can copy and paste the art from there, or you can just check the description itself where I'll also post the art. Coming back to our code, let's go ahead and write a function that will draw the ASCII art on the screen for us. And to do this, I'm actually going to make a new file, which I'm going to call art.py. Inside this file, I'll define a new function, which I'll call draw, and it's just going to take in one input, which will be the choice of rock, paper, or scissors. If the player chooses rock, then we're just going to go ahead and return the art for the rock hand motion. You just go ahead and copy paste it and then place it inside a return statement. We can then do the exact same thing for paper and one final time for scissors. Take some time to copy and paste the art if you need it. And once you're done, go ahead and scroll back to the main file. We're going to scroll to the very top and we're going to add a line where we say from art import draw. And what this will do is it'll tell Python that we want to use this function from the art file. Now let's scroll down to our game logic. Where we print the player selection, we're going to want to go ahead and glue another string onto that. So we're going to pass in their choice as an input to the draw function, and then whatever it returns, we'll glue onto the print statement. We can then go ahead and do the exact same thing for the opponent as well. Since we've added some new functionality, now would be a good time to run our code and see what happens. If I choose rock, we'll see that we choose rock, the opponent chose scissors, and it prints out the correct art as well as us winning. And we'll try one more. If I try paper, then we see that it prints paper correctly out as well. Things seem to be working. Let's just add a little bit more functionality. So after each iteration of the game, we're gonna ask the player if they wanna play again. And if they don't, then we'll exit the loop. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the loop. And we're gonna to wanna to check to see if playing is true and invalid is not true. This lets us know that the player is interested in playing, AKA they didn't choose Q, but that they also made a valid move. Once again, we're gonna to wanna to get input from the player so I'm going to create a new variable called replay and store whatever the player tells us. We also want to give a prompt so that the player knows what it is that they're responding to. One little trick we can do is actually pass our prompt directly into the input function and it'll print out onto the screen. So we're going to paste in want to play again question mark and then we're going to set a new line using a backslash n. We're then going to ask them to type yes to replay. And we're going to want to use backslashes for the quotes so Python doesn't get confused. And then we're going to type in another new line and then tell them to enter anything else if they want to end the game. And then to make our game a little bit more bulletproof, we're also going to include the dot lower and the dot strip methods that we used previously. After this, we're going to include one more empty print statement for formatting and readability. And if you're curious, try running this code with and without the print statement to see the difference. And now the moment of truth, we're going to set playing to be the value of replay is equal to yes. There's a lot going on here that may be confusing, so let's dissect it a little bit. Remember that a double equal sign checks to see if two things are the same. So it's going to go ahead and check if our replay variable is equal to yes. And if it is, this whole thing is going to result to true. If it's not, it's going to result to false. The single equal sign is then going to store that true or false outcome into our playing variable. Now before we test our game again, let's add one more piece of functionality. We want a way to clear the screen so we don't have all this jargon bundling up. We're going to need some help from another built-in module to do that. So after random, we're going to put a comma and then we're going to want to import OS. Now let's scroll back down to the bottom of our loop and we're going to add another line. This time we're going to say OS.system, which is going to be the function that will help us out. And we're going to pass the argument CLS if OS.name is equal to NT, else we're going to pass clear. What this is essentially doing is passing a command to the console, depending on what operating system the computer is using. Don't worry about the syntax too much if you're a little confused. Just know that by using this line, we're essentially going to clear the screen, and we want to do this at the very end of our loop. 
Our code is pretty much done. We're just gonna add one last final touch outside the loop. So make sure you check your indentation. We're gonna print one more thing and it's just gonna be thanks for playing so we can thank our user as they exit our program. So here at the end, we're gonna run our code one more time just to make sure everything's working as intended. For our first iteration of the game, I'm gonna go ahead and choose rock. We choose rock, the opponent chooses scissors, and you can see that we won the game. When it asks if I wanna play again, I'm gonna type yes. The screen clears and we can play again. This time I'm gonna choose paper. The opponent chooses scissors and I lose this game. When it asks if I wanna play again, I'll type anything else. In this case, I'll just say no. And we can see that the game ends with a thanks for playing message. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel as I plan on making more of these types of videos in the future. If you also want to learn more, I also have a tic-tac-toe tutorial that you can feel free to check out. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and take care.